Welcome to the Mountain Valley News College Football Pick'em Show. I'm Monk Blevin, and this is Logan Wright, and we're coming back this week to, uh, to do a little, talk a little college football. You know, uh, man, this is an exciting time, Logan. You know, we've got all of these play, uh, bowl games going on, and, uh, and I'm excited to be able to just, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about them, and we're just going to pick them as we go. And uh, So what do, you, what do you think about bowl season? Well, usually when we're doing this, we're talking about high school football, and it's a little more closer to us. But the thing about college football to me is it's a lot more – well put together and there's a lot more riding on it you know players are wanting to move to the next level you have so many diehard fans they go to every game in and out and like around here you're either Alabama or Auburn you can't miss a game so I'm excited for all these bowl games oh yeah you know a couple of things you know uh, that's going on now you know we've got the playoffs uh, the 14 playoffs of course you know those are set now we've got Alabama will be playing Michigan State we've got Oklahoma playing Clemson you know and, and the winners of those two games will actually play in the national championship so I know people's excited about that and uh, but there's a lot of other good games too you know uh, the SEC has got uh, I think maybe what 10 teams in bowls this time and uh, so, you know, it's a little strange this year with some of the bowl teams. You know, we've, we've got teams that are playing that actually have losing records, yeah. you know, that are five and seven. Which that um, happened a lot with the high school yeah. playoffs. And so uh, so that's that's a little odd this year. I, I, that, this may be the first time I remember that, uh, you know, that it, we've actually had teams that had a losing record playing in bowl games. But, uh, you know, we're excited to talk about these. And, uh, you know, we're coming from uh, – we're actually at Topher's Wings. We're in the uh, Iron Bowl room and uh, – you know, we thank uh, uh, Chris Key for letting us uh, film from here today. And, uh, you know, we're, we're just going to sit here and have some fun. So uh, let's go ahead. You know, the first game we're going to be talking about, and we are actually starting with the December 26 games. And, uh, you know, the first game we'll be talking about is the St. Petersburg Bowl. And it's actually played on December the 26th. And we've got UConn versus Marshall. You know, Marshall comes in with a 9-3 and three record, and UConn is 6-6. Six and six. So, so what do you think about this game? Well, Marshall to me is one of those smaller teams that have steadily climbed the ladder. Like, I don't want to compare them to TCU because TCU is – very highly ranked right now. They've built a great program, but I think that's what Marshall's striving for, and I think they're getting closer and closer to becoming that type of program. Yeah. You know, Marshall is actually in the uh, Conference USA, and I think uh, UConn is actually in the American Conference, but, uh, you know, this will this will be an exciting game. You know, of course, I'm, I, I guess I'm a football nut, and I'll just watch any football game. Mm -hmm. So, but, uh, so who you, who you picking in this? You know, uh, Connecticut comes in, they're six and six. And Marshall comes in at nine and three. So who do you think is going to win this ball game? Well, who you got in this? The way ball? Marshall's been improving every year, it shows in their record. They clearly have the better record. I'm going to have to go with Marshall on this one. Yeah, I'm going with Marshall too. I think uh, you know this UConn team has played some good games. I, I watched them, uh, and I can't remember who they were playing, but I watched one of their games, and they they've got a really good quarterback. But uh, this Marshall team, I think, will just be a little bit too strong for them. So I think Marshall probably is going to win this game, and uh, you know, but that it'll be a fun one to watch. You know, the next game we want to talk about is actually the Sun Bowl in El Paso, Texas, and it's on. De it's actually December the 26th, also, and we've got the University of Miami playing Washington State. You know, uh, Miami is sitting at eight and four, and actually Washington State is sitting at eight and four. You know, I guess the one thing about the uh, the this Miami team, you know, they have hired Mark Rick as their coach. He, I don't think he will be coaching this game. But, uh, you know, so what's your thoughts on this Miami-Washington? You know, this Washington State, uh, and I cannot think of their coach. He's the crazy guy who likes the Pirates. and, oh. and uh, But, uh, you know, they, they run a wide open offense. You know, they throw it every play. If, if they run the ball, you know, if they run the ball ten times a game, that they're doing good. So, so what's your thoughts? What do you think about Miami and Washington? I really – I love the Canes program. I remember I've – watched so many of their games from the early 90s when they were I guess they were that times Alabama you could say but I know they're having some problems right now as far as uh, getting their coaches in I know that, like you said they hired Mark Richt and that always has to be in the back of a player's mind not being for sure you know who uh, who his coach is going to be next year um, if his scholarship is going to be there right. and I haven't, I haven't got the opportunity to watch Washington State play but the record says enough about them yeah yeah, this will this will be a you know I, I'm sure Mark Rick will have his hands in on this program already has already got his hands in with the program he's already there, but um, you know I, my understanding is he will not be coaching this game but uh, you know I'm I'm sure he'll be viewing and watching those players so you know this Miami team they're gonna want to make a good showing for Mark Rick because like you said I think some of them may be worried about hey what about my scholarship is it, you know am I gonna be able to stay on the team what's gonna happen and uh, you know with Washington State I you know they just like I said. 
said they just run a wide open offense, and uh, you know, and they'll they'll throw the ball over all over the field. And uh, you know, this Miami team. One of the things I think about, you know, the crazy game that Miami was in with uh, uh, Duke, where it, they you know they picked the, they threw the ball all over the field on the kickoff mm -hmm. and actually scored and beat Duke. Right there at were the end several of the game. blocks in the back that weren't called. Absolutely, but. yeah. That, it was a few probably penalties that needed to be called, but uh, <laughs> you know, so this this is going to be a fun game to watch. And who you going to pick in this one? Who you th who you got on this one? I know um, they're not for sure about their uh, coaching staff right now, but I feel like that Canes program is just too good, and it's a program that really knows how to win and I think still wants to win. So I'm going to have to go with Miami. Yeah, I'm going with Miami too. I think just talent-wise, probably they probably have more talent than Washington State. But, uh, you know, it, I think this will be a close football game. You, you never know about Washington, you know, with the offense they run at, you know, throwing it around. And But uh, I think, you know, just – as if you just go on pure talent, I think this Miami team is probably a little bit stronger. So I'm going with Miami, too. You know, the next game we got is the Heart of Dallas Bowl, uh, and it's also played on December the 26th. And we've got Washington uh, versus Southern Miss. You know, uh, this Southern Miss comes in this year with a 9-4 and four record. Washington is 6-6. Six and six. You know, this Southern Miss team has played good football this year. Of course, you know, they switched coaches. Uh, you know, they had Ellis Johnson as a coach for a couple of years, and, uh, and he was replaced this last year. And this team, you know, they're playing with his players that he recruited but this team is really playing well right now so so what's your thoughts on, on, on Southern Miss and the Washington game? Well actually I have some friends that go to Southern Miss and one thing they've told me is just the atmosphere of those games is completely crazy and I think that's something that especially a smaller college team really needs to have is a great fan base and a great cheering section and I think that may be one of the reasons why their season has went so well they have a 9-4 record another reason is their rushing game they have a great rushing yes. game they run the ball all night and they're really hard to stop yeah so who who are you picking in this one I'm gonna go with Southern Miss yeah I think Southern Miss will just be a little too strong uh, this Washington team you know uh, of course they're, they're out of the uh, uh, Pac-12 and uh, you know and, and and they play some good teams but uh, I, I think this Southern Miss team is probably just going to be a little bit too much for them you know the next game we've got is the pinstripe bowl and uh, we've got Indiana versus Duke you know uh, this Duke team comes in at seven and five uh, Indiana comes in at six and six you know one of the things I watched this Indiana team and 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 they played Ohio State early in the season man and they gave Ohio State all they wanted uh, they've got a good football team you know the record doesn't really reflect that but they were in a lot of those games that they played and uh, and and this this Indiana team is not bad of course you know we got the Duke who plays in the ACC and uh, you know again you know they lost to Miami on that crazy last play and uh, and uh, you know and and a couple of games it seems like after they lost that Miami game you know they they kind of lost a little bit of momentum seems like and uh, but uh, you know this Duke team is well coached and uh, so what's your thoughts well, to tell you the truth, I'd probably be a lot more excited about this game if it was played with a round ball if they were playing basketball because both these teams have great basketball programs. But you talk about Duke. I know I believe they've lost five. Is that, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. They lost, like you said, that crazy play to Miami. But after that, they had a, a two or three more fourth quarter losses that really could have right. went either way. So it's really hard to judge a team by wins and losses when that happens. So I feel like this Duke team – should be over the hump now. They should be past that tough loss, and they should be playing and firing on all cylinders. So I'm going to have to go with Duke in this game. Yeah. Well, you know, I struggled picking this game. Uh, you know, I like Duke, and, uh, you know, I, I, and, and they've got a I, – I just, I'm just a Duke fan. But, uh, you know, I've, I've seen this Indiana team play some, and uh, I'm going with Indiana. I just – I like the way they play. They're hard-nosed, and they run the football. And uh, so I'm going out on a limb here, and I'm going with Indiana in this game. You know, our next game we've got is the Independence Bowl, and we've got Virginia Tech versus Tulsa. You know, a couple of things. You know, we got Virginia Tech coach Frank Beamer. This will be his last game. He's retiring from Virginia Tech, and, uh, you know, so you know these players want to go out and, and win this last game for him. You know, Tulsa, one of the things with Tulsa, you know, uh, actually uh, they, they are, they're sitting at 6-6 six and six too, and uh, – uh, but they they have a got have got a great team. I watched them play uh, a couple of games on TV, uh, just some highlights and things, and uh, and they're they're not a bad football team. So so, what's your thoughts on Virginia Tech and Tulsa? Well, before we break this game down, I got to ask you something. What is a hokey? I know their mascot <laughs> is the bird, but I have never heard a bird or anything else referred to as a hokey. Ah, uh, you've got me on that one. I don't know. I do not know. But. Uh, well, whatever it is, uh, their mascot's always very spirited, and you always see them on ESPN and stuff. But I think this is a very talented Virginia Tech game, and their coach is retiring. And 
when it's a coach's last ball game, I know you always want to go out there and perform well because I feel like that's one of the ways that a coach is remembered by his last game. And I know that they'll be coming out and ready to beat this Tulsa team, so I'm going to have to go with the Hokies. Yeah, I think you're right. I'm going with a. I'm also going with Virginia Tech. I think uh, you know uh, uh, this team. They're going to want to play well for or for Coach Beamer it being his last ball game, and uh, and uh, you know, and they want to see him go out on a winning note. So I'm going with Virginia Tech in this game. But I think this will be a close game. It it will be a very close game. You know, the next game we got, we've got UCLA and Nebraska, and they're actually playing in the. Foster Farms, Bo. You know, I mean, some of these names. I we were talking uh, talking to one of the other guys, and I told him, I said, you know, I think we might could even get a bowl in Grainsville. We could call it the Mountain, Mountain Valley, Valley News bowl. bowl or something. But uh, you know, this uh, UCLA team, and, and excuse me, just a minute, I got to look at their record. They come in setting it. They're they're eight and four. UCLA, Nebraska is one of those teams that's coming in. They're actually five and seven. They're one of the teams that got in with a losing record. So, uh, so what's your thoughts on on this game? Well, like you said, I know UCLA has the better record, but to me, you also have to look at conference strength. And I feel like Nebraska is the better team here. You look at Nebraska teams in the past, um, they're always very hard-nosed Russian-type teams. They brought their uh, workout program in at Plainview a couple years ago, and it would mean it was awful. I can see why their uh, Russian game is always so great. I'm going to have to go with Nebraska in this one, I think. Yeah. You know, the one thing about this Nebraska team, uh, you know, at, in the be at the beginning of the season, they, they opened up with BYU and uh, and and had BYU beat. And, of course, BYU just throws up a Hail Mary at the end and beats them. And, uh, you know, and, and Nebraska lost some close games. And, actually, then they turned around and, and they beat Michigan State, who was playing Alabama, you know, in the in – the, uh, uh, Cotton Bow. So uh, this this Nebraska team is actually not as bad as their record indicates. You know, uh, UCLA. You know, they had a chance to. Uh, they actually had a chance to win their side of the of the uh, Pac-12, and uh, it came down to them in Southern Cal. Of course, Southern Cal defeated them at the end of the season. But uh, you know, this UCLA team. They start a freshman quarterback who is phenomenal. He's very good quarterback, and uh, you know, uh, just looking at their records and uh, and looking at what's going on, I'm gonna go with. UCLA. I think with their quarterback, I, I think they probably are just a little bit stronger. So I, I'm picking UCLA in this game. You know, next game we've got we've got the military bowl, and that's uh, Pittsburgh versus Navy. You know, Pittsburgh comes in with an eight and four record. Navy comes in at nine and two. You know, one of the things with Navy, they just lost their coach actually to BYU, mm -hmm. and um, I don't know. And I and I should have looked this up, but I'm not sure if if the if the Navy coach is staying for this bowl game. I would assume he is. So, what's your thoughts on this bowl game? Well, I believe that uh, their coach actually is going to stay and coach this game. And I've got the opportunity to watch Navy throughout the years, and they're one, or throughout this year, and they're one of the few teams that started off well. They started off playing great. That's one thing you really have to do to get in postseason play. And I'm going to have to go with Navy over Pittsburgh on this one. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, I, I looked at this, and uh, and uh, and this will be one, this will be another one of those really close games. You know, Pittsburgh it has got a good team, and, but this Navy team, you know, they run the option. And man, if 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 a football team hasn't practiced, you know, or faced an option, you know, it is hard to get ready for them. It's just, you know, especially one that runs it all the time, like a Navy and a Georgia Southern and some of these schools. And uh, and so this Navy team, man, I tell you what, they're they're going to be hard to stop with the offense they run. I'm going with Navy too. I just I think with that offense and you know, we're running the being able to run the option, it's just going to be a hard day for Pittsburgh to be able to stop that. You know, the next game we've got, we've got Central Michigan at Minnesota, and this is in the, uh, it's actually the quick lane bow. And, uh, you know, Central Michigan comes in at 7-5. and five. Minnesota is another one of these teams that comes in with a 5-7 and seven record. Uh, so who you got in this one? I'm going to have to go with uh, Central Michigan. Like you said, their record's better. And this is one of the few games that I feel like is going to be kind of one-sided during the bowl. So I'm going to have to go with Central Michigan. Yeah. You know, the one thing with Minnesota that, uh, you know, they, they let their coach go in the in midseason and uh, they've been using an interim coach. And, uh, and uh, you know, this Central Michigan team has not, you know, they're not bad. You know, like I said, they, they're they sitting at five, uh, seven and five and Minnesota's at five and seven. But, uh, you know, 
I think, you know, I, I, I'm kind of going to go out on a limb. I think Michigan or Central Michigan actually is going to win this game too. So I'm, I'm picking Central Michigan in this game. You know, the next game we got is the uh, Armed Forces Bowl, and that's on December the 29th. We've got Air Force versus Southern Cal. You know, uh, this uh, – I'm not Southern Cal. I'm sorry, California. California comes in. You know, man, they started this season out just – on fire and got a great quarterback and uh, you know but he kind of fell apart they, they they I don't know as the season went you know he he got to throw in interceptions and and uh, but uh, you know so they come in they're actually I think their record and if you'll just give me a minute here to look this up uh, and I can't find it of course but uh, you know this this Air Force team comes in you know and again they're one of these option teams and uh, so this this is going to be a great football game so what's your thoughts on this one who you who you picking in the we talked. You talked a little bit about the option, how hard it is to defend against, and it's even harder to work at practice because you don't typically have a, stout, a scout team that can run that offense that well. And Air Force does run the option. They don't run it quite as well as Navy. You know, Navy has a great quarterback, and he, I think he'll be there next year, and he's just an outstanding athlete. But I, I feel like that um, Air Force, their option, they don't run it as well. I feel like they turn the ball over a little more, which is one thing when you run the triple option you cannot do. I don't feel like they have that great of a fullback either. So I'm going to have to bet against Air Force on this yeah. one. Yeah, uh, I found that, you know, California comes in with a 7-5 and five record. Air Force is 8-5. and five. And, and I'm, I think I'm with you on this one. I, I think this California team, uh, you know, uh, man, I, like I said, they started out on fire. And, uh, and, and they've got some talented players on that team. So I'm going with California too. I think that one, I think, that'll, I think California will be able to pull that one off. You know, the next game we got, is the uh, Russell Athletic Bowl, and uh, this one's played in Orlando. And, uh, you know, we've got North Carolina versus Baylor, man. And, you know, this will be a great football game. Uh, you know, the uh, this uh, North Carolina team, you know, they played Clemson in the ACC championship, and they've got a great quarterback and a great running back. Their running back actually, uh, I think his name is Hood, if I'm not mistaken. He was actually – the top rated uh, running back in the nation last year and he went to North Carolina as a fr he's a freshman this year so uh, so what's your thoughts you know North Carolina comes in uh, with a with 11 and 2 record of course Baylor comes in at uh, 9 and 3 you know this Baylor team that they they play in the Big 12 and uh, you know they their offense man they were lighting it up you know uh, man they can score from all over the field but their quarterback got hurt you know uh, about the last – toward the end of the season. And uh, so they kind of fell off a little bit and, and struggled offensively, you know, after after they lost their quarterback. So what's your thoughts on this? Well, North I got Carolina the opportunity Baylor? to watch um, North Carolina Clemson. And Nor I'm telling you, North Carolina gave them everything they could handle. And they almost won that game. A lot of people thought that they should have won that game, and they almost pulled it out. And like you said, they have a very gifted runner, and he toasts the ball very well. Yeah. And – I know Baylor's quarterback got hurt, but this is still a great team. I feel like this is going to be more of an offensive game. It's going to be more of a – you're going to look at the score at the end of the game and it's going to be like a basketball game was played. Yeah. But I'm going to have to go with North Carolina. Yeah. You know, the one thing at, uh, the, with North Carolina that, you know, Gene Chizik, who was uh, his former head coach at Auburn, is actually the defensive <coughs> co coordinator at, at, uh, at North Carolina and has done a phenomenal job. And this North Carolina team has got a pretty good defense also. In the, but this Baylor team, you know – Man, I tell you, even without their quarterback, they can light it up, you know, with the receivers they have. And, and they play decent defense, you know, too, for, for Big 12. Uh, you know, I, I struggle with this one, but I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm picking Baylor. I think okay. Baylor might, you know, they might just outscore North Carolina. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm going with Baylor in this game. You know, our next game, we've got Arizona. It's the Arizona Bowl, and uh, it's Nevada versus Colorado State. You know, uh, this uh, – this, you know, Colorado State, of course, they lost their coach to Florida mm -hmm. last year. And, uh, you know, I, again, I, I should have looked these up before time. But, uh, you know, this uh, this will be a great football game. This Nevada team, I saw them play some nights. On, it's hard for me to go to sleep after watching, them, you know, some of the ball games. And I watched this Nevada team play. And they can light it up. They've got a, they've got a pretty good offense. And so what's your thoughts on, on this uh, Nevada? I think Nevada comes in, looks like they were 6-6, six and six, and Colorado is uh, – Colorado State's 7-5. and five. So what's your thoughts on this game? Well, I haven't got the opportunity to watch Nevada play this year. But if you go back and look at Colorado State, they have several great coaches that come from there. It seems like they just keep producing coaches. And uh, hopefully sooner or later they'll get to keep one. Yeah. But uh, a lot of the coaches keep moving off. But I feel like that says a lot about your program if uh, your coaches are able to move off and, you know, really progress and get higher up the ladder. I'm going to have to go to Colorado State. Yeah. I think I think um, Colorado State's probably going to win this game. You know, the one thing, uh, you know, uh, 
they they had some the coach that was there had some great recruits coming in and uh, this Colorado State team is not bad so I'm going with Colorado State too. You know, next game we're going to talk about we've got the it's the Texas Bowl and uh, we've got Texas Tech versus LSU. You know, we're getting into some SEC games now. You know, LSU comes is sitting at eight and three and we got Texas Tech sitting at seven and five. You know, this Texas Tech team. They're another one of those. They spread the field and throw it around, you know. And, and and probably, you know, if you look at this game, these two teams are right opposite. You got Texas Tech, like I said, they spread it out, throw it all over the field. You've got LSU, who is just going to play hard nosed, run it down your throat, type football with Leonard Fournette at running back. So, what's your thoughts on this game? Well, Texas Tech's best uh, running back or runner is their quarterback. And what they do is they, they run the spread and it spreads the defense out, sort of like Alabama does with the pistol formation, how it makes one of your linebackers move out of the box and have to cover a wide receiver, and that's also a mismatch. But to me, my favorite type of offense is LSU's, that hard-nosed oh, ground game. You know, we're going to run it right at you, tell you where we're going to run it, and you have to stop it. And I feel like that's, that's how you win ball games. Cause yeah. Like you said, uh, three things can happen in a pass, and two of them aren't good. That's exactly so right. So I'm going to have to go with LSU. Yeah, I think this LSU team, you know, with Leonard Fournette as uh, as the uh, as the running back they have there, and you know he he was in the Heisman for most most of the season, and uh, you know, uh, and again, I, I don't know, I've I've seen Texas Tech play, and their defense probably they're probably not geared to stop a running back like Leonard Fournette. So I'm going with LSU. I think uh, you know one of the things that I think about, you know, last year the SEC didn't fare well in bowl games, and uh, you know, so one of the things that of course, I know if you're an SEC fan like I am, you hope the SEC sh has a good showing this year, and I, I, I think that'll be a good start with it with LSU. I think uh, they'll they'll be able to knock off Texas. This is Tech. also a must win for Les Miles, as much uh, trouble as he's had with coaching the past year, and if he's going to stay, if he's going to go, or LSU was thinking about buying him out. I feel like this is a must win for the fan base of LSU and for Les Miles. Oh, absolutely. You know, the next game we got is the Birmingham Bowl. And uh, it, it'll be played on December the 30th at noon. And, you know, we've got Memphis face, uh, uh, facing Auburn. You know, uh, this Memphis team comes in, you know, with a 9-3 and three record. Of course, they've lost their head coach. You know, he has moved on. Uh, Auburn, you know, uh, man, they struggled this year. And uh, actually, you know, Will Muschamp, their defensive coordinator, has left and taken the South Carolina job and actually has taken a couple of the Auburn coaches with him. And so, uh, you know, I know Auburn is, is kind of in a, in a situation right now. They don't know kind of what they're going to be doing as far as a defensive coordinator. I think I did see where Lance Thompson is filling in as the interim defensive coordinator for this game. So, so what's your thoughts as, as Auburn faces Memphis? If you look back at Memphis, Memphis has upset several teams this year. I believe it was Ole Miss that yes. came out on top. Yes. And Ole Miss at that point was one of the top three teams in the nation. They were projected to go to the playoffs and everything was going right for them. They had beat Alabama. The Memphis shut all that down. Auburn has struggled a lot this year, but at times, at times they've played like a great team. They've played yeah. like they belong in the SEC. And this game to me really just depends on Auburn, you know, which Auburn team comes out to play. Right. Yeah. But I'm going to have to go with Auburn in this one. Tell you what, I, I've struggled with this game. You know, uh, I, I just I've been reading. You know, try to keep up with what's going on at Auburn, and uh, and I haven't kept up a whole lot with Memphis. But I know Memphis has got a phenomenal quarterback. As a matter of fact, I heard in, uh, looking at the some of the draft picks, and uh, and he will be one of the top quarterbacks at, going out in the draft. And, uh, and he is very good. He's got some good receivers. Uh, this. It's Auburn team, you know, they have struggled at quarterback. Uh, and, and the last I had heard, they still were trying to decide who was going to be their starting quarterback for this ball game. Uh, you know, I know uh, listening to Coach Malzahn, he said one of the things that he wasn't really worried about winning this game as much as he was trying to get some young players in and get some experience. Uh, you know, I know the fans were disappointed in the season they had, but, uh, you know, you know they would love to see – Auburn win this game and have a winning record. Uh, I tell you, I, you know, looking at it and looking at it on paper and looking at Memphis, I, you know, with this Memphis team, that they can they can light it up. And you know, I'm gonna go out on a limb. I'm picking Memphis to beat Auburn in this football game. I, we'll see I if think lightning that, strikes twice. Yeah, and they can yeah. beat an SEC school two so times this year. I, I know the Auburn fans don't want to hear that, but uh, you know, I, I think 
because of the things that Auburn is going through defensive wise right now and, and just the you know, I think they're probably looking more to the future and trying to find some players that, that wanna play and uh, I, I just think this Memphis team is gonna be ready and I, so I'm going with Memphis. You know, the next game we've got we got the belt bow and uh, it's uh, we've got another SEC team. We've got uh, Mississippi State versus North Carolina, you know, Mississippi uh, North Carolina State comes in with a seven and five record. Uh, and I think uh, Mississippi State comes in, they're eight and four. And, uh, you know, uh, this Mississippi State team, you know, if you look at them, man, Prescott, what a great quarterback he is. You know, he has played well and uh, he set every kind of record that could be set at, at, at Mississippi State. Uh, you know, this North Carolina State team is not a bad football team. But I, I watched them play and, you know, they, they're a hard nosed, very, very well coached football team. And uh, so, with, you know, they've got. Uh, you know, they, they've got a chance to win this game. So what's your thoughts as Mississippi State and North Carolina? You can't say enough about Dax Prescott. And an 8-4 and four record doesn't sound that great, but you got to remember that's an 8-4 and four record in the SEC. So that is a very, very great record. And Prescott is pretty much their, their go-to guy. He has yeah. to do everything for them. And as long as he stays healthy in this game, I don't feel like they should have trouble winning. As long as Dax Prescott, I feel like the game really depends on his performance. So I'm going to go with Mississippi State. Yeah, I'm going with Mississippi State too. I think you know uh, this team would like nothing more than to send Prescott out with a with a win here, and I think you'll see him play well. I, I think you know he'll just be a little bit too much for this uh, North Carolina State team. So I'm picking Mississippi State also. You know the next game we got we got the Music City Bowl in Nashville, and that's on December the 30th. And you've got the we got Louisville versus Texas A&M. You know Louisville comes in with a seven and five record. Texas A&M comes in at eight and four. Uh, you know, Louisville, uh, you know, their coach Petrino, he, he likes to spread it out and throw the ball around. And, uh, you know, and of course, you know, we got to see them at the, at the beginning of the year as they played Auburn. And, you know, they had chances of winning that game. And, uh, and uh, so this Louisville team is not bad. You know, Texas A&M, you know, they come in and, and just this week, they actually lost their first two starting quarterbacks. You know, the, uh, the, the Allen kid and then the Murray kid both have transferred out and will not be playing in the bowl. So they're down to their third straight quarterback in this game this week so, so what's your thoughts as, as on this Louisville Texas A&M now Louisville Louisville is a good football team I, I haven't got to watch them later in the season but I watched them play Auburn earlier in the season and they played great they went out and they performed and I know that was when Auburn was struggling a little more but it's still Auburn they still have five-star prospects out on that field yeah and I feel like they're a great team and they definitely have a chance to win this game I know a lot of people are going to count them out but I feel like their defense is too good, and especially with A&M's quarterbacks being gone, they're down to their third string. I mean, that kid was carrying the water bottles last week, and right. now he's taking snaps. Absolutely. If he gets hurt, they're probably going to have to put a punter in. So yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to go with Louisville. Yeah. I tell you, just, uh, you know, I don't know what's going on at Texas A&M, and, uh, and uh, you know, all of a sudden these quarterbacks are transferring out, and, uh, you know, uh, it sounds like they may have some issues there. And, uh, so I, I'm not sure exactly what uh, what is going on, but uh, I think you're right. I think with 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 losing your two top quarterbacks and going to your third team quarterback, I think this Louisville team is probably going to upset Texas A&M. But then again, we could argue Ohio State last year. Yeah, that's true. And uh, you know, I do hope Texas A&M wins this game. But you know, just sitting here having to pick right yeah. now, I'm going with Louisville. Also, I think that I think Louisville may be ready for them. You know, the next game we got is the Holiday Bowl, and that's also a December 30th game. We've got Southern Cal versus Wisconsin. You know, uh, we know a little bit about this Wisconsin team. You know, Alabama opened up the season with Wisconsin, and of course, you know the thing about we know about Wisconsin. You know, they're big, they're strong, and they're going to try to run it down your throat. You know, they remind me a lot of an Alabama team. You know, Southern Cal comes in and. Uh, they played uh, Stanford for the for the Pac uh, Pac Ten championship, and uh, you know had a chance to win it. Uh, but uh, you know this Wisconsin team has played well all year. You know I think they're coming in with a record of uh, just a second here, uh, if I can find it. Sorry guys, I'm I'm struggling. They, USC's eight and five, and Wisconsin is nine and three. So this Wisconsin team, you know, uh, you know they played Alabama well at the beginning of the season. So what's your thoughts? Well. Wisconsin is really one of the main reasons that Alabama was fortunate enough to make it to the playoffs. Because yeah. you go back and one thing they look at is how many um, big wins yeah. they have, how did they perform you know, when it, during a big game. And Wisconsin was a top ten team when they played to open up the season. And I feel like you, you referred to Wisconsin as being like Alabama, and I think that's definitely true. I feel like their rushing game is 
almost up there with Alabama. So, no, they don't have a Derrick Henry. But I feel like their defense needs work. Their defense is not as good as a Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. But I feel like they are talented enough to win this game. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going Wisconsin. I think, you know, the one thing, you know, Southern Cal did hire uh, coach. He was the interim coach, Coach Helton. And, and actually they, they hired him as their uh, head coach, you know, uh, toward the end of the season. So, uh, you know, but I, I think this Wisconsin team, you know, they're just, uh, you know, they're able to uh, just run the football and, and, they, and they play decent defense. And uh, so I'm going with Wisconsin. I think I think they'll I think they'll win this football game. Next, you know, we got the uh, Peach Bowl. This will be played uh, on uh, December the 31st, and we've got Houston versus Florida State. You know, and and this is going to be one of those ball games, man. I tell you, you know, uh, Houston comes in at 12 and one. You know, uh, and and people will look at them and say, well, you know, they 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 play in Conference USA, and 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 you know, they're they're not that good, maybe because of the conference they play in. You know, Florida State comes in at 10 and two. Uh, you know, one of the things that with Florida State, of course, you know, they lost they lost to Georgia Tech on at the end of the game on a on a on a field goal blocked and returned for a touchdown, which you know was one of those kind of fluke what plays. If moments, yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, this team could be setting it, you know, easily setting at eleven and one right now. So, so what's your thoughts on this Houston and Florida State? Well, I watched um, Florida State play Florida, and I believe they they came out on top in that game and. They really – is that right? I believe they did. Yes. I'll make sure I remember right. We've talked about so much football at right. all. But uh, they really shut down Florida's season. Florida was hoping for a chance, you know, to continue on, maybe go to the playoffs. But they, they shut that down. And I feel like they're a team that knows how to win big games. I don't feel like Houston is there yet. I know we talk about how SEC is the uh, – best the hardest conference to play in week in and week out but you know florida state's conference is not an easy one either i mean houston's definitely is not one of the stronger so that's why i'm going to go with florida state i know they've had some trouble as far as coaching and stuff like that but i feel like florida state's going to come out on top on this one yeah yeah you know you look at this and uh and and uh, you know this houston team like i said uh, you know they can they they can they can light it up offensively, and and they actually play some pretty good defense. But the, you know, watching Florida State versus Florida, and uh, man, this Florida State had a, has got a good defense, and you know, and the Cook kid that at running back, you know, he he could have been in the Heisman Trophy race there, and uh, you know, he missed a couple of games with some injuries, and uh, and probably if it hadn't have been for that. He would have probably been setting up in New York at the Heisman presentation. So, uh, you know, so I, you know, I, I think this Florida State team, you know, I, I think they're probably just a little better than this Houston team. So I'm going with Florida State. T, let's let's skip over. You know, the next two games we got on on our list where it would be the um, um, would be the playoff games. But let's skip down and and we'll come back to those at the end. Right. You know, the next ball game we got on January the first. You know, we got Northwestern. And uh, Tennessee, you know, uh, Tennessee comes in, and uh, I tell you what, this Tennessee football team is not bad at all. No, you know, and definitely just not. watching them, you know, it, probably if you look at the uh, at, at the Alabama game and Tennessee game, this Tennessee team probably played Alabama better than any team they played this year. And uh, you know, uh, they come in, they're they're setting at seven and five. Of course, you know, the thing you look at the us, you know, Oklahoma, they had Oklahoma beat. Mm -hmm. And Definitely. and and just, you know, at the beginning of the season, I don't know what was wrong. They actually had Florida beat and uh but they they couldn't finish. They it was just seemed like they couldn't finish a football game at, to begin with. So so what's your thoughts on this Tennessee? You know, Northwestern beat Stanford at the yes. beginning of the season, and, and they've got a great team. So what's your thoughts on this Northwestern and Tennessee football Well, game? I hate to say it, but uh, I don't feel like Northwestern is really worthy to be in this game, especially with Tennessee, which I know Tennessee's record doesn't show what a great team they are. But like you said, if you go back and look, I mean, they were a hop and a skip away from being undefeated playing Alabama. And they played Alabama – like you said, probably the best game Alabama got all year. And I know a lot of uh, – it was a nail-biter. A lot of Crimson Tide fans were very worried out there. And I said at the start of the season that was the game I was worried about for Alabama. I know you could pick the old Miss game, but five turnovers, you can't really go by that. But I feel like this is a very great Tennessee team. And it's one of the main teams to me whose record doesn't show what a great team they are or how good they can play at times. And I feel like – as long as they keep their turnovers down, Tennessee should have no problem coming out on top in this one. Yeah, yeah. You know, I look at it. Uh, Northwestern comes in they, with a ten and two record. 
But again, you know, some of the teams they played, I, you know, I, they haven't faced a schedule like this Tennessee team. And uh, you know, at the beginning of the year, I know a lot of people were down on was down on Butch Jones, uh, as, you know, Tennessee's head coach. And uh, but uh, you know, he has turned this team around, and and they're playing really good football right now. So I'm going with Tennessee. I I think they'll be able to pull off the win, you know, and and, and defeat Northwestern. You know, the next game we got, we've got. Uh, Notre Dame versus Ohio State. This is in the Fiesta Bowl. You know, Ohio State comes in with 11-1 record. Notre Dame, I think, comes in at 10 and two. And uh, you know, this uh, this is going to be a great football game. You know, uh, Notre Dame actually, you know, they they lost the game to Stanford right at the end of the football game. It was getting you know, another one of those things where you know the Stanford throws a deep pass, and, and then they were able to keep the field goal and 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 beat Notre Dame. Or you know. If Notre Dame had won that game, we could be talking about Notre Dame in oh, the playoffs. Definitely. Same thing with Ohio State. And same both thing with teams. Ohio State. Yeah, both of these were, you know, were were had chances of being mm-hmm. in the playoffs. And uh, you know, this Ohio State team, you know, we know they they're great. They've got a, you know, they've got a great running back in the Ezekiel Ezekiel uh, kid, and uh, their their quarterback play is is well. You know, they kind of they have a couple of quarterbacks they can play there and rotate them in and out in different situations. So, what's your thought on this game? Well, to me, Ohio State was my fifth seed to the playoffs. But if you ask uh, Lou Holtz, he's going to say, Notre Dame was the best team there is. You, can't, <laughs> you just can't play with Notre Dame. They're the best. But I feel like Ohio State is much too talented. I know Notre Dame gets a lot of hype because of what school they are. And I, I don't really agree with that. But I feel like Ohio State, you know, they won, they won it all last year. And they know how to win big games. So I'm going with the Buckeyes on this one. Yeah, I think I think Ohio State, uh, you know, I know, I know they, they – you know they're disappointed in not being in the playoff yes. after winning the national championship last year. Uh, you know this Notre Dame team. Uh, you know they're good. I don't get me wrong, but I think this Ohio State team. I think you'll see that they're a much better team than Notre Dame. So I'm going with Ohio State. You know the next game we're getting back in SEC. We've got Michigan versus uh, Florida, and uh, you know this is going to be another one of those great games. Uh, you know, uh, Florida comes in and, and, you know, they struggled with Alabama in the uh, SEC championship. Uh, they just couldn't get any yeah. offense whatsoever generated. You know, this Michigan team comes in they're well coached. You know, uh, Jim Harbaugh has done a great job and turned this Michigan program around. And, uh, you know, and, and, of course, one of their losses was to Michigan State. Yeah. On, a, on another one of these, we, I think we've talked a lot about flukes, and, I, and that was another one of those, you know, where they score the last play of the ball game and beat Michigan. There was Michigan definitely a it. lot of those this year, it right? It really was. It, yeah, just it, me was that. it was one of those years where, you know, you, you just uh, – I don't know. It, it's kind of crazy watching all these games and, and seeing how, uh, you know, a lot of people – all the upsets and just crazy, crazy, fluky plays happening, and so, uh, so, what's your thoughts on this on this Florida and Michigan game? Well, talking about Florida, to me, you can't say enough about their defense, and you can't say as little about their offense because they really against Alabama. You watch them play; they had no offense whatsoever. They could not move the ball. It seemed like everything they tried just didn't seem to work. And I believe uh, their only points from that game came as either special teams or defense. I can't remember which one, yeah. but. Their offense, it just struggles so much. But this is one of those games where I feel like their defense is going to be be good enough to uh, come out on top. And I know Michigan's a good team. And like you said, they lost that one right before the end to Michigan State. But I still feel like playing in the SEC, I have to pick these SEC teams because every every week you play in the SEC is a big game. And these players are really used to it. So I'm going with the Florida Gators. You know, I I looked at the – Teams were evenly matched. You know, Michigan is sitting at nine and three. Florida was ten and three, of course. And uh, but uh, you know, the the this Florida team, you know, the one thing that stood out to me watching them play Alabama in the SEC, SEC championship game was their defense is mm-hmm. the real deal. You know, it their, gets after. their defense, you know, and their defensive backs, they by far have the best defensive backs in the Definitely. nation. Definitely, you can't say and, enough uh, about that secondary. So their defense, you know, played well against Alabama. Uh, you know, this Michigan team, uh, you know, they come in, they've got, they, they have played well all season. Uh, you know, the one thing that concerns me about Florida again is their offense, not being able, you know, they can run the ball. And I, I, and again, I don't keep up with Michigan football a whole lot, but uh, you know, I, I think this Michigan defense is pretty good. And uh, of course, I know with Jim Harbaugh, you know, they're going to play good defense. Right. And uh, I'm going out. I, you know, I don't know. I, I just feel like with with the with the way the offense has played this year with Florida, and you know, and losing their starting quarterback for the year, and uh, 
and and I don't know. It seems like after he went out, you know, after after he was suspended for the year, actually, it seems like this Florida team kind of just the offense just kind of fell off the radar, and uh, you know, I, it, it's hard to win if you can't score. So I'm going with Michigan. I I just feel like Michigan probably is, you know, with with the way all Florida plays offense. And again, I you know I I want to see the SEC teams win, but I I just feel like this Michigan team is probably too strong. So I'm I'm picking Michigan in this game. You know, the next game we got we've got the Rose Bowl. We have Stanford versus Iowa, and uh, you know these are two other teams that we we talk about that you know this Iowa team comes in that and they're setting at. Uh, at 12 and one, at 12 and one, and uh, Stanford comes in with a with a 10 and two record. Uh, you know, Stanford again. They, you know, they lost early in the season to Northwestern, and uh, you know, this Iowa team. You know, <laughs> run the schedule. You know, yes. went 12 and 0, and and but they run into a good Michigan State team, and and lost in the uh, in the in the big in the Big 12, or uh, I'm sorry, the in their championship game. Yeah. And uh, so, what's your thoughts on this Iowa Stanford game? Well, I got like you said, both of these teams are two that were considered being in the playoffs. I know these a lot of people had this as the uh, five and six team. Iowa was my sixth team. I love watching Iowa play. I can't watch them enough. How they run, they have a position that a lot of teams don't have nowadays. It's called a fullback. Right. Yeah, and they use him. And I love watching Iowa play. They're hard nosed, and they they look like the Steelers to me. The old Steelers when like how they run, how they run downhill, and stuff like that. And I can't say enough about this Iowa team, and that's who I'm picking to win. Yeah, you know this. The, to me, this is one of those games that's going to be a great matchup. You know, this Iowa football team has a great defense, mm -hmm. and uh, just watching them play, and uh, you know, uh, and and you don't, you know, I, I guess uh, their defense to me stood out a little bit more than and then maybe their offense. But uh, you know, and of course you got Stanford, and man, what can you say about them? You know, their running back, he was yeah. he was in the Heisman running, actually finished second, and. Uh, Man, an all-purpose. What, what a good – you know, he's just a great back. I mean, you know, he uh, he's able – he returns punts. Mm -hmm. he, he runs back kickoffs. You know, he's, he's one of these guys that does everything yes. for him. Uh, you know, I think this is going to be a great football game, uh, you know, just – and and I, I struggle a little bit on this game, but I'm going with Stanford. I don't know. It's kind of a gut feel for me. I'm, I'm picking Stanford. I just think they, uh, you know, they'll be able to pull that off. They to me, Stanford plays a little hard nosed football more like the SEC does, and so I, I'm going with Stanford. You know, our next game we've got the Sugar Bowl on January 1st, and we got uh, Oklahoma State playing Ole Miss. You know, Oklahoma State comes in with a, uh, a 10 and 2 record. Ole Miss is at 9 and 3, and so uh, you know this Ole Miss team. Uh, of course, they they beat uh, Alabama early in the season. Uh, you know, I, one of those games where Alabama had to turn the ball over a lot. You know, and then we talked about they they traveled up to uh, uh, Memphis and lost to Memphis in that game. And and uh, you know they kind of up and down season. Uh, you know, but they can they have got some talent on that football team. Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, with this uh, Ole Miss team, you know. Uh, Robert Condici, he he got in a little bit of trouble this week or la or over the weekend, and uh, and uh, I'm not sure what his status is for this bowl game. Uh, so and you know this Oklahoma State team, you know, uh, man, they're they're another one of these teams. They spread the ball out and throw it everywhere. So so what's your thoughts is on this uh, Ole Miss and Oklahoma State? Uh, it's so hard for me to pick Ole Miss in this game because I'm such a diehard Alabama fan. But if there is one lucky team in college football, it is Ole Miss. I mean, Alabama is a team that never turns the ball over, and Ole Miss came out and they got five turnovers that game. They've beaten the uh, one of the teams in the college playoffs right now. Not many people can say that. Right. Well, I believe everyone has one loss except Clemson, but still count them on one hand. This is a very great team, and they have a lot of great athletes. They have a lot of talented wide receivers, and to play week in and week out in the SEC, I don't think Oklahoma State's used to that sort of environment. And I know Sugar Bowl is going to be huge. It's a huge environment. It is every year. So I'm going to go with Ole Miss. Yeah, I I'm going with Ole Miss too. I think, like you said, just the just the fact that that Ole Miss has played in the SEC, you know, in the teams they have faced in, in the West, you know, and and I, and I think me and you would agree on, you know, the the Southeastern Conference West has probably got the best teams in the in the in the nation as far as from 
beginning to Definitely. finish there. And, and so I think this Oklahoma State team, you know, they'll they'll score some points. But, I, you know, this Ole Miss King, they can score some points too. You know, uh, they probably have the best receiver in the nation and, and the Treadwell kid. And, uh, you know, man, he can go up and grab the football. And, uh, you know, Kelly at quarterback, yes. uh, you know, he, he he just seems to find ways to win. And so uh, I think Ole Miss will win this football game. So I'm, I'm going with Ole Miss. You know, the next game we got on January the 2nd was the, is the Tax Slayer Bowl. Uh, we've got Penn State versus Georgia. You know, Penn State comes in with a 7-5 and five record. Uh, Georgia comes in at 9-3. and three. Of course, you know, with Georgia, they've lost their head coach. Of course, uh, the thing they did, you know, they have hired Kirby Smart as the head coach. Mm -hmm. He will not be coaching Georgia in this bowl game. And, um, you know, and, and – and there's been a whole lot of shakeup in Georgia. You know, Jeremy Pruitt, their defensive yes. coordinator, is now the new defensive coordinator for Alabama. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I did read this week where they had put a uh, temporary defensive coordinator in. You know, uh, I know Kirby Smart is in the process of hiring coaches, but uh, so they're just kind of filling in. So, what's your thoughts as on this uh, Georgia Penn State game? We talked about it a little bit earlier in the show. I can't say enough about how much it affects a player to know that. Um, your coach is not going to be there. I know a lot of these people, most of them probably were recruited by Mark Rick and Jeremy Pruitt. I know he's a former recruit, recruiter of the year. So obviously he's very good at what he does. And that's got to be the reason a lot of these players are there. Because Georgia, they've sort of been on the decline in the past few years, if you yeah. look at their record. And that's not what Georgia football is used to. Right. But yeah, they, they still keep getting all these five-star prospects. They still keep yeah. reloading, it seems like. And this is a very talented Penn State team. I don't feel like this is a team you want to have that in the back of your mind playing against. So I hate to do it, but I'm going to have to pick against an SEC team and go with Penn State. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I'm like you. This this Georgia team has got talent. Uh, Penn State, uh, you know, they, they've got a really good quarterback. You know, one of the stats that I did see, uh, actually this morning I was just kind of looking around, uh, you know, Penn State's quarterback has been sacked more than any quarterback in the, in the NCAA. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I struggle with this with with the, with the changes at Georgia, you know, going on, and and you know, and and Penn State, you know, they're kind of settled in with their coach Franklin, who came from uh, Vanderbilt, and he's been there a couple of years now. But um, you know, I and when I looked this, and I I just kept looking at, it and I thought, okay, but you know, I just think Georgia has too much talent, even even without the coaching staff. I think they have the talent to be able to win this football game. So I'm going with Georgia. I just I feel like with their talent, they've got a chance to win it. You know, the next game we got, we got the Liberty Bowl, and uh, we've got uh, Kansas State and Arkansas. You know, Kansas State comes in with a 6-6 six and six record. Arkansas comes in with a 7-5 and five record. And I, and, I, and I tell you what, you know, just looking at this ball game, this Arkansas team probably from midseason on probably played as good as anybody in the SEC. And uh, so what's your thoughts on this, on this Kansas State? <coughs> an Arkansas game. Well, Arkansas is one of those teams you, uh, you kind of feel bad for because they didn't come alive until later in the season. But, man, when they did, they came alive. They upset a lot of people. It seemed like they were in every single game. They were throwing the ball great. They were running yeah. the ball. And they had a, an actual SEC-type defense. And I don't feel like Kansas State can compete with that. I don't feel like their uh, defense is going to be able to stop their offense or that their offense is going to be able to score on this Arkansas defense. So I'm going to have to go with the Hogs on this one. Yeah. Yeah, I looked at this game, you know, and I, I do like Kansas State's coach, and uh, he's done a, a great job there. And, uh, you know, but uh, I think the way this Arkansas team is playing right now, you know, I I, I dare say I, I'm glad Alabama doesn't have to face this Arkansas yeah. team again. So I'm picking Arkansas. I think they're just going to be too much and, uh, you know, uh, uh, they're building for the future. And, you know, this football team will be real, a really good – uh, football team next year. You know their quarterback has played outstanding yes. this year, and uh, so so I'm picking Arkansas. I think they'll just be too much. You know our next game is the Alamo Bowl, and uh, man, to me this is one of the better games on the on the of the, the bowls. You know we've got Oregon coming in at nine and three, and they'll be facing TCU who is ten and two. Uh, so you know I know TCU. Uh, of course, their quarterback got hurt, and uh, in in one of those games, and uh, and then they lost their, one of their better receivers. You know, Oregon on the other hand, you know, they started out a little bit slow. Uh, you know, they were they're playing a new quarterback this year, but I tell you what, as the season went on, they got much better. So, what's your thoughts on this game? Now, if there's one team in the NCAA that I do not like to watch play, it is Oregon. <laughs> I cannot stand that hype that 
quick offense. They run it as fast as we can. You know, if they stop us, they stop us. We'll punt just to get the ball back. I, I, I don't like that offense at all. I can't stand to watch it. So I'm going with the Horn Frog Battalion on this one. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I've looked at this and, uh, and, and, and studied it. And I, I tell you, with, with TCU, you know, the last couple of games they struggled. And, and with Oregon, you know, they seem to be getting better. Uh, you know, TCU has, has a good defense. Oregon, you know, I don't know. They don't really play defense yeah, at all. But uh, this is another one of those games I think is going to be a high-scoring game. And, I, and, I, and I'm going with Oregon because I just think they'll outscore TCU. So I'm, I'm picking Oregon in this game. I just, you know, I, I'm, I think this will be one of those. It may be a 60 to 59 yeah. game or something like that. So, but I'm, I'm going with Oregon. You know, the next game we got is the Cactus Bowl, and we got West Virginia versus Arizona State. You know, uh, West Virginia comes in at seven and five. Arizona State six and six. So, uh, you know, this West Virginia team is not a bad football team. I've watched them play. A couple of games and uh, they're not bad you know they, they can they, they play good football Arizona State uh, you know some of the games they, they lost a couple of really close games and uh, they've got a good football team so what's your thoughts on this game well you talk about how they lost uh, very close that's another thing you can't really the records are so close but then you have to add in how many the Arizona State lost so close that you know if one thing the ball would bounce a different way you know somebody would have came up with a pass they probably shouldn't have caught that their records change. They're they're the better team than West Virginia then. So I feel like West Virginia has a good offense, but not a great offense. They do have yeah. a better defense. I feel like their defense is better than Arizona State's, but I still I'm gonna have to go with the Sun Devils on this one. Okay. Uh, this one is I, I think you know it's gonna be a, a great football game and I I just kind of flipped the coin on this one and I'm going with West Virginia. You know, I think West Virginia uh, uh, We'll be able to pull this one off, but this should be a really good game. You know, we've talked about all the bowl games. Now we're going to get into the playoffs, and I think this is what everybody is excited about. You know, uh, this is year two of the playoffs, and, uh, you know, again, you know, last year uh, Alabama made it into the playoffs, and, uh, of course, they, they were the number one seed in the playoffs mm -hmm. last year, and they actually lost to Ohio State. In we the, don't in like the, to talk and, about that, though. And, uh, you know, Ohio State was fourth seed, and they went on and, and won this whole thing. So, But this year, you know, our first game, you know, we got the Orange, Orange Bowl coming up, and we got Oklahoma and uh, Clemson playing in that game. You know, Oklahoma comes in at 11 and one. Uh, you know, the one thing they didn't have, they they don't play a uh, you know a, a conference championship game. Uh, you know, Clemson comes in. They're sitting at 12 and 0 undefeated. You know, they beat North Carolina in the ACC championship, and uh, you know, I, I tell you, uh, Dabo Swinney has done a fabulous job at Clemson so so what's your thoughts on this on this orange bow in this playoff game well I've got the opportunity to watch Clemson play and they have a great quarterback and he is just to me I wouldn't write quarterback beside his name I'd write athlete because he can do it all I feel like if you line this kid up at wide receiver he'd have no trouble at all especially even in this conference but I don't feel like Oklahoma is going to play as great a game for some reason I don't feel like they're ready for this game and we know Clemson is because Clemson's been looking forward to this it seems like Every year they're ranked, and then something you know crazy happens. They get knocked out of the top ten right. or something. And I, I think Clemson feels like that they deserve to be here, and they're going to show that. And I know I have Oklahoma marked on my paper, but I'm going to change that to Clemson because I feel like the Tigers are going to come out with this one. Yeah, you know, again, this this uh, this Clemson team, you know, the Watson kid at quarterback has played outstanding all year, and he was another one of those who who was in New York last week for the Heisman Trophy presentation, and uh, and uh, and well deserving. I mean, you know, this kid has played well. He, uh, you know, he was hurt last year. I think he's a sophomore this year, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, but he is he is the he is the cog in that offense for Clemson. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, and the other thing, the the thing that surprises me about Clemson, I guess more than anything, is they play great defense. Yes. They've got a defensive line, you know, and, uh, and one of the things I heard, you know, they lost a lot of their defensive linemen this year. But, man, the, the defensive line that they've got in there this year has played really well. They've got good linebackers. They play the pass really well. Uh, you know, on the other hand, you've got this Oklahoma team. And, uh, and uh, you know, the, uh, to me, this Oklahoma team, if there's any other team in a different conference than the SEC, Oklahoma plays more – to me, like an SEC caliber team, the way they play, uh, you know, they've got a, you know, it's 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 hard to believe that the the kid they have at quarterback is a walk on quarterback, and he came in and, and beat out the starter, and uh, and uh, you know and and the you know this Oklahoma team, the thing that scares me, you know, Alabama faced Oklahoma uh, what two years ago yeah. in the uh, 
in the uh, Sugar Bowl, and, and Oklahoma just wore Alabama yes. out. And, uh, you know, and this Oklahoma team, is they're playing with some confidence right now. And uh, so this is going to be absolutely a great football game to watch. Uh, you know, and I've been back and forth on this game, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, most people were a little surprised, I guess, that Oklahoma wound up being the fourth-seeded team here. Uh, everybody, you know, kind of felt like Michigan State would be. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and a lot of people said, well, they just set this – they set this up for an Oklahoma-Alabama game yeah. again and, and that type thing. But, uh, you know, uh, I think this is going to be a really close ball game. Uh, you know, I, I think – you know, I, and again, I'm struggling with this. I've got Oklahoma picked, and I'm going to stick with that. I, I just think, uh, you know uh, – I don't know with Clemson being in a big game like this for the first time in a long time. You know, they they did win the national championship back in the in the in the eighties, and uh, but it's been a it's been a long time since they've been in a game like this. And you know, Oklahoma has played in several. I just feel like Oklahoma's probably going to win this ball game, so I'm going with Oklahoma. You know, the next game we got is in in the Cotton Bowl. We've got Alabama versus Michigan State. You know, and uh, of course, you know. Michigan State comes in, and uh, you know, uh, man, that they, you know, they were probably one of those teams that surprised you. You know, you do, when you watch them, you just you look yeah. at me think, well, they're not that great a football team, but they find ways to win. You know, just like with the Michigan game, you know, blocking the punt and and and, and taking it in on the last play of the game. Uh, you know, their quarterback has struggled a little bit. Uh, he's been injured, but I did read this week where he's getting better. So, what's your thoughts on this Alabama and? Uh, and Michigan State game. This game, one thing that worries me, Alabama, if you look back at the previous years, even with Ohio State and especially with Oklahoma, if they're not playing in the national championship and they're playing somewhere post-game, they have not performed well the past few years. And to me, it just it really depends on which team comes out. If you have, like, the Alabama team that played uh, Florida or, or any of these other teams where Alabama put up a lot of points and played really well, then Alabama is my pick, hands down. Right. But then if you have the Alabama team that came out and played against the Ole Miss where nothing was going right, you know, had broken tackles, which is unheard of for Alabama football. So it really depends on which team comes out and play. We know this uh, Michigan State team is very talented, but they they came out on top in a few games, and um, a couple of them I don't think they should have. Yeah, they They were my pick in the playoffs. That If I was coaching, they were the team I'd want to play. Right, right. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go with Derrick Henry in Alabama. You know, he just won the Heisman. He's probably hyped about that. And that is a big man, and I would not want to tackle him. So oh, I'm going to have to go with Alabama. Absolutely. You know, I, I think this is going to be a great football game. You know, the one thing that I listened to Coach Saban talk in the last couple of weeks was he said last year, you know, they go they went into that game, that playoff game, and, and maybe, you know, they had won the SEC championship. And, and, and uh, you know, and some of the players were looking at, you know, whether they needed to go out and as juniors and and yeah. go to the NFL and and so uh, you know they wasn't focused I guess if you if we can use that word and uh, and and Coach Saban says this team is a little bit different they are really focused I did hear uh, you know this week I was very impressed with with uh, Derrick Henry uh, when he won the Heisman Trophy his speech and uh, you know I hope everybody got to see that but the one thing this week later as as they started back practice this week. You know, uh, one of the uh, reporters asked Derrick Henry about the Heisman, and he said, look, the Heisman's over. It's back to football. He said, it's all about this football team, about this football game, and that's all I want to talk about. Don't ask me about the Heisman Trophy. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> listening to him, you can tell, you know, he Saban's is, had he his is, hand on hey, Saban has had his hand in that. And, uh, you know, just listening again to Saban talk and uh, – you know, he says we're going to do some things different this year. The way we prepare for this first ball game, and uh, you know, I just looking at Michigan State, looking at Alabama, I think Alabama is just going to be too much for Michigan State, and uh, I, th I think I think Bama wins this game handily, and uh, that's my pick. You know. We've talked about that. Let's talk about, you know, in the national championship game. I guess you, you're saying that Alabama and Clemson are going to be in the game. I'm saying Oklahoma and Alabama. So, so talk to us about that game, Clemson and Alabama, what you see in that game. Well, I feel like first round Clemson is better suited to win because they're running quarterback. But, unfortunately, you can go back and look through the years. The only time that Alabama has been beat by a running quarterback, you have Tim Tebow, you have Cam Newton. But if you go back and you watch those games, 
neither of those – you didn't even count Manziel in there. Neither of those quarterbacks beat Alabama with their legs. Alabama contained, and a lot, they had a lot of sacks those games, and they made those quarterbacks beat them through the air. And I feel like if they do that with Clemson, Clemson will not win the ball game. I feel like Alabama's defense is just too well. And we talk about how great um, Clemson's defensive line is, but you know Alabama's been up against that week in and week out. Yes. And they've still yet to find someone that can stop Henry. I, I can remember um, a post-game interview with uh, Henry after I believe it was Florida they played, and they asked him, uh, uh, how do you feel after that game? You know, you had 190 yards. And he said, I'm not happy with my performance, and walked off. <laughs> So uh, Henry is one I love to have him on my team. He's a true leader, and I feel like he's a great class act. And I feel like you can't find a better running back out there, and Clemson's going to have a lot of trouble stopping him. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, of course, I'm picking up home in this game, but I tell you, this this Alabama team, you know, we talk about the defense, and we've talked about them all year. You know, uh, probably the best defense that I have seen uh, Alabama have, you know, uh, uh, Comparing them to the 92 team, I think it, in places this team is much better than the 92 team was. And, uh, you know, and, and then, again, you know, you have Derrick Henry. And, uh, you know, uh, I was watching before the Heisman Trophy presentation they were talking about. They asked one of the reporters for ESPN and said, well, why do you think Derrick Henry should win this, the Heisman? And, and, one, and one of his comments was, well, Derrick Henry has faced 13, the 13 of the best defenses mm -hmm. of the year, you know, playing in the SEC. So, and like you said, you know, they weren't able to stop him. No. And so, I, you know, whether Alabama is playing Oklahoma or whether Alabama is playing Clemson, I think, you know, through the years we have seen defense wins championships. Yes. And, you know, Alabama has a great defense. So, I'm going with Alabama to win the national championship. I think, you know, after last year with the, with the things that happened with Alabama, and uh, I think this team is focused this year, and I think they want to prove, hey, you know, we are the best team in the nation, and I think they want to prove, hey, the Ole Miss game was a fluke. Yes. And, uh, and so, you know, I'm going with Alabama to win this. Uh, you know, I, I guess I'm a little bit biased. I am an Alabama fan. But, uh, you know, I just I, – I think this Alabama team, you know, of defense, offense, special teams just has too much, you know, there. Yeah. And, uh, and and then the other thing, you know, with Coach Saban as the head coach and, uh, you know, people, you know, you may not like him, but he is the best coach oh. in in college football at this point mm -hmm. right now. So, uh, you know, I, I, I think we're going to see Alabama win their 16th national championship. And, uh, you know, again, I'm excited about this college bowl season and especially the playoffs. And, uh, you know, uh, it's man, it's going to be a great time. You know, you know, you, you, you get to open your Christmas presents yeah. on Christmas. And then, you know, the next day, man, and bowl season starts. And, uh, you know, you can kick back and, and watch ball, ball games every day, it seems like. You know, there'll be two or three ball games on a day. And, uh, man, if you're a football fan, it doesn't get any better. Yeah, I'm going to keep this. I'm glad you put the times on all these because I know what I'm doing over Christmas break. Yeah, uh, we're, we're, we're going to spend some time up in Gatlinburg. And, uh, you know, and I'm, I told my family, I said, you know, I know y'all are going to be wanting to get out. But I said, I'm going to be watching a lot of football yeah. games. So, I'm excited, you know, uh, we're glad to uh, get to do this. It's been fun, you know, and, uh, you know, I know uh, one of the things we've got going on in the paper, we actually have a college pick them in our paper for the next two weeks. If you are interested in doing that, we're going to be giving $100 away. Uh, you know, just uh, get, pick up your paper. Uh, over. The, you have to have it back in. If you drop it at the station, it needs to be in by the 23rd. Or if you mail it in, it needs to be mailed in and postmarked by the 26th. And, uh, you know, got a chance to uh, to win a little bit of money and have fun picking them just like we have done today. And, uh, you know, hopefully I want you to keep your sheet and we're going to compare after all, right. all these games and see who comes out on top. And uh, hopefully, you know, you hopefully I'll, hopefully you I'll have the <laughs> hopefully I'll have the bragging rights again here uh, again. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we thank Topher Wing.